I don't want to listen to his podcast, huh? Dude, it's educational. And besides, I've been wanting to listen to this one. Welcome to Idling in the Impala, a podcast by and for lovers of Supernatural and the fan fiction it inspires. Before we begin, just want to remind you to like, subscribe, follow wherever you listen to us so you don't miss any episodes or bonus stuff that we do. I'm Sandra. I'm Carly. And we got another voicemail. Yay! Yay! Voicemail! <laughs> hi, 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 hi. Which was in no part thanks to me bugging somebody. <laughs> But I'll get into that in a minute. So we got we got another voicemail, and it is from the lovely um, runaway dreamer, who I've mentioned endlessly on this podcast. She's my new hyperfixation. She's <laughs> she's up there with supernatural now. She knows this. She knows this. Not this. But she actually, I saw this fic. So I don't know if you saw it when it was like being posted to Ao3, Sandra. Mm-mm. But I saw it, mm-hmm. and it, the, the the tags intrigued me. I was mm-hmm. like, mm, yeah, no, really. But it was still being posted. And I try not to read things that are works in progress because I am the biggest hypocrite. And I get really, I don't get mad, but I'm like, nobody's going to read this until it's finished when I have to post multi chapter works. But I do it. I'm the worst. <laughs> so I kind of like, I kept looking at it and it kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, oh my God. Mm-hmm. And eventually, like, I just, I just put it out of my mind. It like finished. It finished getting posted, so it stopped showing showing up regularly. Mm. You know, like when you go to your, like search the fix on Supernatural, whatever. Mm-hmm. I just put it out of my mind, and then me and Dreamer exchange um, fix all the time. She is a Winces gal like I am, so she's like, you should read this, and you should read this, and you should read this. She's amazing. I don't send back half as many fix to her as she sends to me, but she sent me this one, and she's like, you like. You gotta read Pine Sweat. It's got the fic is called Pine Sweat, but we'll get into that. She's like, you gotta read it. It's so good. It's long, but it's so so worth it. And I was like, okay, I I, I looked at it. I didn't realize it had been finished. Blah 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 blah. So I read Pine Sweat. I was blown away. That is where this story was gonna end. And then we got our last voicemail from the lovely Jensen fan. And I had said to Dreamer, I was like, so what's this voicemail? Blah blah blah. Um, and she. She was more took by the idea that she could recommend fix to us than anything else. So she's like, how do I recommend that you read Pine Sweat? How, how do I recommend that you do an episode? And I was like, I sent her the link because I'm a sarcastic asshole. And I was like, leave us a voicemail and we'll do it. And I was I was only kidding with her. I, I was going to bring Pine Sweat to the next cannon fodder that me and Sandra did anyway. But she took she took up the challenge and she left us a voicemail. So thank you very much, Dreamer. Please leave his voicemails. We get stupid hypes about it. And we like exchange personal messages and stuff like, oh, that's so much voicemail. So just send us voicemails, guys. We really like them. You don't have to, you don't even have to give us a thick recommendation. Just tell us that you like what we're doing. And we're not just yelling into the <laughs> void of the internet. Uh, I thought I'd lost you for a minute then. You were so silent. I was just letting you go. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> I, t- I tell you, give me a chance to talk about my hyperfixations, be they shows, people, mm-hmm. the fucking cat, you know, <laughs> whatever it is. So, all that to say, Dreamer, we got your voicemail. We're going to discuss Pine Sweat. Hey guys, can I wreck you a fic? It's called Pine Sweat and it's by Apple Crumbledore on AO3. It was just recently completed and it's a long one, but it's everything a great Winces should be, in my opinion. It's angsty, feely, funny, and super hot. I'd love to hear what you guys think of it. Okay, that's all. Keep up the awesome work. Bye. And it's it's a pretty pretty beefy fic. So normally we try and do cannon fodders, um, you know, like two, but it, it's pretty beefy. It needed its, it needed its own episode. So, do you want me to just keep going? Or are you you planning to jump in at any point? Or are you just going to let me keep, um, keep digging this hole? Well, so <laughs> so I got so once we got the recommendation from Dreamer, you were like, "Oh yeah, this is one she's already recommended to me." And you know, I knew it was I, I knew just by the fact that it was Dreamer. And you that it was going to be Wincest. So I was like, okay. And you know, I I do appreciate our, a, a good Wincest fic. So uh, I saw how long it was. And I was like, oh God. I'm like, okay, this this is going to take me 
a while to read because I don't read as fast as Carly does. So I was pretty much hooked by really the first couple pages when I started reading it. And I really liked it. I loved it. It's, it's, it's a really, I have to go here's see now here's where I'm bad. I have to go into AO3 and we do this right now. And I have to kudos this thing because I read it on, I read it on my Kindle. So I got to go all the way down to the bottom. You kudos it right now. Kudos there. It's kudos, but it doesn't need any kudos because I mean, it does need all the kudos, but this fic is doing phenomenally. It's got, it hasn't even been out two months yet. Like in terms of completion, it's got 16,000 hits, 169 bookmarks, 843 kudos, 450 comments from the notes that I was reading by the author, which is Apple. Do we say it? Apple Crumble Door? Do we, do, do we give them the shout out we yet? Didn't, no. Okay. We didn't. So it's by Apple Crumble Door. And again, we'll link it um, in the description so that everybody else can just bathe in the gloriousness of this of this fic. It looked like it had been something that the author had been working on since August of last year. I believe this author actually did the same thing and completed (laughs) (laughs) the entire thing or was close to completing before they decided to release the fic, I think weekly, like you said. So it started Mm -hmm. in March, ended in in May. I would not have seen this. Uh, This would not have been something that would have come up on my radar because I don't search. I don't search for this stuff primarily. Um, I'm more a Dean, Dean Reader, Dean OFC. Who's going to have that? Who's going to have those listeners' backs <laughs> if I just jump <laughs> completely onto the Winces train? <laughs> I didn't say you had to jump onto the Winces train. I just said- I'm hanging on, though. Should... I'm like, I'm I'm debating on, but no, I, I enjoy the the authors and writers that- do such an amazing job with this, with this pairing and this, and this ship. So I, you do a great job. Dreamer's amazing. It's just, it's just awesome. Like there's just so many great, great writers that, that partake in this. Um, It is. I I figured out that I basically just yelled at you and threw Wincest in your face until you were like, well, guess I like Wincest now. (laughs) <laughs> when we first, even back when we first started this podcast you were like oh no i like i like hat stuff i mean back when we first started this podcast i still i still wrote hat stuff and, mm-hmm. and primarily read hat stuff but you were like no i like i like hat stuff and now you're like i like i gotta talk about this 100k wins this fake y'all it's fucking awesome i think that i mean i think the stuff that like i sometimes occasionally i read and it was very rarely because it was just like, and I, I still will if if I think it's a it's a really good one, and I get I get a recommendation. Is um, I've I've read a few Destiels. I actually read a Destiel time travel one that I had recommended. I think when we did a Destiel uh, episode for Destiel fanfic, oh, the yeah, same kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, um, a time travel one. So I think it really depends on. It really depends on the storyteller. If the storytellers great i think i'll read pretty much anything you know um so i don't think she has to read my stuff because it'd be awkward otherwise Mm -hmm. but i loved as much as i hated i also loved demonic junkies in that love hate way so you know it's waiting waiting to see how that one pans out carly no no pressure (laughs) (laughs) you and me both friend you and me both you have to read my wednesday stuff because it would be (laughs) awkward if you didn't because I am around to go, Sandra, did you read? And if you go, no, I'm going to be sad. No, I don't I, want that. I read all of your things. I just don't read them. I don't read them <laughs> as punctually as I should. We we talk about this a lot. Oh, Carly, Carly reads voraciously. And I am not, I'm not the speediest of readers. I have like a ritual, of like when I will read. And it's usually when I'm in bed. So if I'm not trying to write something, then I'll read. And this, this pine sweat one, because I knew we were going to talk about it. I wanted to actually be prepared. So I started reading and I was like, okay, this is not going to be at all difficult, you know, to, um, Mm -hmm. to get through. So I had some notes, thoughts. Um, I'm sharing them on the screen with Carly right now, but I was not informed that we bring notes. No, you didn't have to. I did this. What I did was when I when I wrote my notes down, it was actually right before I was getting ready to start the 
penultimate chapter in in this because I was like, I've got to get some thoughts down because as I kept reading it, you know, there's so many great lines by this author. There's an amazingly detailed plot, which is already difficult when you're dealing with time travel. It mm-hmm. makes sense though, but there is a time travel thingy that in my brain is it's starting to break when I started thinking about it again a little bit today, but we might talk about it. We might not. I might not remember. And you know what I just figured out? It's called pine sweat. Mm -hmm. I just realized it's about pining also. Like I just thought it was like pines, like pine trees, but it's like pine sweat. So like Dean's Uh pining. I just got that like an hour ago. I was like pine sweat. (laughs) Okay. Now I get it. I was thinking it's because they were in the forest, pine sweat, but it's that other thing. So great, great for me. It's, it takes me a while, but sometimes (laughs) I'll get it. But there's a alternating POV, more Sam than Dean. I think Dean's maybe Mm -hmm. only got three or four chapters, I think in total. That's from his POV. Uh, The rest is Sam. Very happy that there was a happy ending, um, which there needs to be when you're dealing with all of this madness that is the boys' lives, angel fuckery, uh, again, time travel, camping. There's all the great smut stuff that happens in it. When you first started reading it, what what kind of sucked you in like the most with this with this particular fic? It's it's just it's just the writing. There's mm-hmm. no Yeah. I mean, the the summary, the summary got me. And like mm-hmm. I said, I kept seeing it and I was like, you know, mm-hmm. but it was mm-hmm. it wasn't finished. It kept getting bigger and bigger. And I was like, mm. Mm-hmm. But um, I, the summary, the summary is just a few lines, and I mean, I, I defy anybody who is into Winces not to be drawn in by it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sam watched Dean hack up firewood with his hatchet. The magically induced heat wave had his shirt soaked with sweat. Did you ever have a um, experimental phase? Sam smacked his lips, trying to think of a diplomatic way to phrase it. That kid, by which I mean you, has been staring at me kind of a lot. That's a quote mm-hmm. from the text. And then Sam and Dean get sent back to 1996 and go on a hunt with their teenage selves. The kids don't know who they are. I mean, come on now. Yeah. That's en- yeah. that's engaging as fuck. That's yeah. that's a hook right there. Yeah. But no, as soon as as soon as I got into it and I started reading it, the writing just mm-hmm. it it really grabs you and doesn't let go. And it like it just hurls you straight in the middle of it. Mm-hmm. And you kind of, so I suppose the basic, the basic premise is. Um, I guess we should 2000... say too, like, uh, uh, we're, we're really suggesting that you read this first. Like if you, if you haven't read yeah. this, read this first, then come back to us gushing over this because I can't talk about this without spoiling it. So just like off the yeah. bat right now, like there's no, no way to talk. So read it, then come back and listen. If you if you yeah. really want go, to read this fic, <laughs> go go read it now. We'll wait. Okay, you don't. Okay, great. Okay. Let's move on. Because <laughs> that's good. Because then they can whoever is listening can pause for as long as they need to, mm-hmm. and then come back. Mm-hmm. So the Absolutely. the prem the the premise is two thousand and nine Samadhi, which is as Sandra has in her notes, it's season five Supernatural, but it's before. Before Sam and Dean go to heaven, yeah, and meet up with Ash and have the uh, have the little dollar soulmates, which then never gets brought up for like ten more seasons. Mm-hmm. Fucking weird. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Let's not get into. Let's not get into that. So mm-hmm. they go. They get. They get sent back by forces unknown to 1997. Mm-hmm. And when they get to 1997, they're like, what the 1996. Fuck was this? 1996. Is it six? 1996. Seven. Yeah. Nope. 1996. 96, it is. Nope. I'm adding years on. I'm adding years and I'm borrowing from other places. I'm adding years on. So yeah, 96. And they um, you know, they kind of just like wake up just like in the in the middle of nowhere. So they're like, well, we better find, you know, civilization. And the first sort of place that they come to, they find 1996 Sam and Dean. I think they're like sparring in the in the backyard. Yeah. Um, and they're like, oh my God, that's us. Mm-hmm. So oh, the best thing that the um I'm just gonna call them season five, Sam and Dean, and uh, baby Sam and Dean, because mm-hmm. I'll confuse myself with the with the dates. <laughs> mm-hmm. The best thing that season five, Sam and Dean can think to do is to wait for, because obviously the kids are teenagers. I think 
Dean is 17 and mm-hmm. Sam is 13. Mm-hmm. It's to wait for them to leave on and then break into the house. Mm-hmm. And the way that they choose to do this, because they have nothing. Mm-hmm. They've been transported in their sleep from a mm-hmm. motel. So they don't have any gear with them whatsoever. No guns, no lock picking. So it's hot. I can't remember where. I think they're in California, but it's a, a huge, huge it's different. Part of yeah, wherever fish. it is, it's just the absolute opposite of like in terms of yeah. cold, heat, like where they were at, where they're where they're where they've been transported situation. Yeah. So wherever they were, it's fucking freezing cold. And now they're in I'm I'm 90% sure it's California and okay. it's fucking hot. Mm-hmm. So they wait for for John and the kids to leave and they break into the, the house. And the method by which they do this is Sam decides that he's just going to take his shirt off, wrap it around his fist and put his fist through the glass in the door. This works out great. They get into the house and come face to face with John with the shotgun. (laughs) So their first introduction is Sam shirtless. You know, his hands in the air going, it's definitely not what it looks like. But John kind of, they, they end up going for a beer with John and like, season five sam gets like really shitty mm-hmm. and they figure out where they are and they remember what they did which is that john goes off to hunt i think it might be a chimera i think it's a, but john yeah in 96 no. john goes mm-hmm. he leaves the boys in this like rented house and he goes to fight to kill a chimera whatever it is while john is gone baby sam and dean attempt a hunt of their own mm-hmm. And it goes wrong. Sam ends up with heat stroke. They don't get the monster. Lots of people die. So season five, Sam and Dean figure out that that's what's happening. And they're like, you fuck this up, basically. We know what you're going to do. You fuck this up. And they're trying, obviously, older Sam and Dean know that it's them. But younger Sam and Dean don't know that these two guys that broke into this house are them. Mm So, you know, they kind of, kind of lie and be like oh yeah no we you know just kind of fudge the truth a little bit and they're like look if you're going to do this we're going to come with you and they're all going to go and go on this hunt while john is gone and they're going to go and and kill the monster so basically they're trying to figure out why they were sent back and they're thinking yeah the reason that they're that they've been sent back by whoever for whatever reason is to right this wrong and save these people that's what their initial thought process is for this and it's some yeah. kind of a they're they're thinking they're saying it was a demigod. It's some kind of a creature that is almost like a tree, from what Sam yeah. had talked about, a boreal or something like that. I think was the name of it. They, yeah. baby Sam and Dean thought it was a forest nymph, and then Sam and Dean, with their memories, are like, oh no, it was a it was a an arboreal demigod, and you know shit got real real fucking fast, mm-hmm. and you didn't you didn't get the monster and like a lot of people died. Mm -hmm. So baby Sam and Dean are still gung ho about going on this hunt and they're, they're, you know, Billy badass and they can do it and they don't need dad, blah, 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 blah. blah. So Sam and Dean are like, you fucking idiots, but all right, we'll go with you. Mm -hmm. And they, they make them, they make them take actual, you know, like camping supplies and tents and things like that. And they, it's up a mountain, which is Mm -hmm. very symbolic, of course. Mm -hmm. And they load up and they, set off hiking up this mountain and this is primarily where all of the rest of the story takes place is them hiking up this mountain there's friction obviously between especially younger dean is pretty mad about all this kind of stuff and they're still even as they set off on this trip they're still trying to keep who they really are under wraps I can't. Mm-hmm. I genuinely, it's been longer for me than it is for Sandra. I cannot remember what they tell them in terms of why they know who they are and what they're doing. Can't remember. I know. I think they actually do tell them in the beginning. I think they do say that they're from. No, not until because um, it's the amulet. Once John leaves and they're they're talking to the kids, they actually do tell the kids that they're from the future. They don't tell them that they're. Sam and Dean. They tell them they're from the uh, hunters from the future. They said they know about the. They said they know about the all the stuff. So they have the information on it. So that's how they. And then they have to prove. Like they have to pull stuff out of their pockets or stuff that they have to show them. You know that it's from, 
they're from the future for whatever reason they're coming back to i just wanted to dial it back a little bit and talk about the descriptions of younger sam and younger dean and how yeah. seeing themselves from the outside right like and, and sam sam clocks it first right sam sam gets that it's them first i think he recognizes dean's um dean's shirt and different things like that and he's like you know dude that's us and he's like no Dean's like, I never look like that. He's like, you look like that till you were like 20. <laughs> Dude, like, you know, you, you look like that. And Sam's very, Sam's very wiry, not quite, you know, not quite as tall as Dean yet, but he's getting, he's getting up there. Mm. And he's got the, I think he's got the, he's got all the, he's, he's got the hair, but not like the hair, hair, like he, he eventually has, but I think he's got the bangs and stuff. I just don't think it's as, it's as much as it is in season five or getting to that point. I think I can't remember for sure. Yeah. The endearing qualities that they see the, the immediate, like wanting to like, they're annoyed by themselves, but they also want to take great care of them. Like, and there's just, they, they see these little moments with them together that kind of make them soft. And I think thinking about, the relationship, especially Sam, because all of this from the beginning is from Sam's Sam's perspective and how very close they are, like, and, and in terms of like physically close, like there's a physicality that's not something that, you know, they, they kind of just, they clock it right away. And I, I think even in, when they wake up, tell me if I'm wrong, but when Sam wakes up in the very beginning, isn't he close to Dean? Uh, or is that does that happen later? I feel like in the very mm -hmm. beginning he's close. No, to No, they're him. on the ground. Yeah, but they're yeah. but they're like close to each other. There's like this, which is kind of difficult to, I guess, reconcile to because Dean, you know, Dean's mad at him because it's all the stuff that's been going on with Lucifer getting broken out, and I think the way they're talking about the storyline, this isn't soon after. This is pretty soon after Dean was sent back was sent to the future in like the end episode and like i guess 20 so it's 2009 2014 so they're still trying to get past whatever you know distrust or just they're not talking it's it's not as comfortable as it was before so they get to see the young sam and dean and how they're interacting i just I loved seeing how, because we've made mention of this too, like, or a lot of people have, how Dean just has a different way of dealing with kids and it's, you see it yeah. right away and he just kind of like goes into that mode. And even though he's like annoyed, you definitely see how much more he's wanting to take care of Sam, make sure Sammy's okay. Uh, that just inherent thing just kicks in, even if, even though it's, there's two Sams, but he's going to, it's not, it's not the right Sam. Yeah. yeah. He's, he's going to, he's still going to want to take care of both of them. And young Dean, I think tries to play it off as very cocksure and just like, you know, he's got it under control, but he's also just very caring for Sam in that very older brother, younger brother, yeah. pain in the ass kind of way. And I liked reading about the older Sam and Dean reaction to the younger Sam and Dean in the beginning. Yeah, it's, there's a lot of in yeah. the beginning, there's a lot of we were never like shut up. Mm -hmm. We didn't do that. We mm -hmm. would no shut up. Mm -hmm. I didn't look like that. You look like that, but I didn't it, yeah. you know there's a lot of which I imagine a lot of us would go through if you could go back mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and see yourself, you know. Yeah, because the other person that you're with Ten more years. often than not, yeah. you know, that person's going to know what you look like a lot better than you will because you don't, you know, you're not going to be looking at yeah. yourself in the mirror, you know, all the time. So because they spent the most time with each other, like once once Sam is like, dude, that's you, then you know, Dean looks at young Sam is like, that's you. <laughs> and so it's like, yeah, it's, it's that familiarity and seeing the little quirks that the boys do or or their personalities. And seeing how they kind of started in young Sam and Dean and continues um, with the boys. So yeah, this mirror, looking back like crazy funhouse mirror thing is, is, it's quite interesting. And the author did a really good job of making you understand who was talking when, 
you know, so they yeah. really made the point of like saying younger Sam, younger Dean, Sam, younger Sam got called Sammy a lot. So there was that distinction as well. Which can I say, yeah, can I say, I really, I really love that because mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's easy to draw a distinction between a younger and older Sam just by that, just by mm-hmm. Sam and Sammy. The authors even adjusted the dialogue to be like the similarities and you can go, Oh yeah, that's Dean. That's totally something Dean would say, but it's, you know, it's, it's said with, with wisdom mm-hmm. or it, it's said in a younger manner, you know, it's, it's never ambiguous who is talking and who they're talking to, mm-hmm. which I imagine with two of the same characters, yeah. that's quite difficult. I struggle yeah. with dialogue between two people. Yeah. Never mind four and they're the same goddamn people. Yeah. And especially in the moments when you've actually got like a young Sam and Sam talking like off together, or, you know, you've got the, the different pairings that go like, you know, a young, a young Dean with older Dean. But yeah, there's the authors just I, I I've got to find out more about this author because this this is just like it's just exquisite. It's, it's just really good writing. It's really good writing. But yeah, that was that was the thing that I think drew me in first was like, oh, this is so cool. Like I I do enjoy time travel, even though it makes my head hurt. But I like the idea of them getting a chance to go back and interact with themselves. And mm seeing that sort of like do they do they have the same like are they still as hard on themselves as you know like looking outside in do they get to see what you know what they're going through a little bit more maybe have a little bit more compassion turns out dean does it (laughs) um (laughs) but yeah so there's all that so they're going out they're going out on this hunt so for for a while oh and then the basic premise of the the god the demigod is that as they get closer and closer to wherever the god is up at the top of the mountain they're going to be affected by sort of different i don't know what would you call it just uh, sensory auras auras or of... something circles where yeah. like one one is like it's intoxication drought, a drought so the, uh, the the first the first what the first one is 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 drought so they stop feeling hungry and mm-hmm. thirsty and mm-hmm. sam and dean remember mm-hmm. this from their memories and that that is what causes the initial hunt in 96 to go so wrong is that Sam and Dean aren't because they don't know that it's a it's a um a pagan god. So they don't register mm-hmm. that they're not eating and drinking, and Sam becomes very unwell and they have to abandon it, and Sam ends up in the hospital. It's like a whole thing. So the, the first the first one is drought, and there's and there's lust. Lust, intoxication. And there's intoxication. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There is one more, but I can't I can't remember. Is it like I don't know, it might be maybe anger. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. I don't think no, so. no, there's there oh, is, is there is that is in there, there too, I think. One? Yeah. 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 I know into intoxication is the last one and drought is the first one. And the other two is like, you know, anger and lust. So mm-hmm. Sam like, old older Sam and Dean, season five Sam and Dean are very clear. Like, this is going to be what's happening, but we're going to, you know, like, we're going to set timers on our watches and we're going to keep drinking and it's blah, 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 blah. And like I said, they took the kids to a proper store and bought, like, tents and camping gear. Mm-hmm. So they'd be proper... more prepared. Yeah. 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 They were like, we're going to get to the top of the mountain and we're going to do the thing. We're going to, because they assume that that's what they're there for, that, you know, this hunt mm-hmm. went so wrong and a lot of people died. So they must be there to to fix it, to make it go right. <laughs> this is this is all fine in theory and where it starts to go wrong is season five sam just catches dean watching him looking at him sam obviously comes out he used his shirt to wrap his hand when he punched through the door so he's kind of just been wandering around shirtless for a little while <laughs> so if dean catches him coming out of the bathroom after a shower and he's like do you have like a a shirt I could borrow completely forgetting that he's you know so many years older and nothing that Sam and Dean own are gonna fit him so mm-hmm. he kind of drops himself in it there and he's like oh your dad maybe oh mm-hmm. fuck but he catch, catches Dean eyeing him up and this keeps happening mm-hmm. which leads us back to the summary of going did you have a, like a, a a thing like phase, yeah yeah, yeah we, what he keeps looking at me and Dean Dean blusters over this, of course, and is just like, nope, what? No, shut up. What? Mm-hmm. They don't, he doesn't know it's me. What? what? Mm-hmm. 
but this keeps happening. And then they're going up the mountain and they get caught out. Mm-hmm. So Dean had taken his ring, uh, season five, Dean took his ring off, tucked his amulet under his shirt. He's not Dean, he's Tom, I think. Yeah, Tom, they're, yeah. They're he, Tom and he Mark. makes a comment about it that he's like, thanks for thanks for calling me Tom. <laughs> I like, appreciate yeah. that, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then... There, Dean's washing up in the creek. There's always a creek on a mountain, isn't there? Never <laughs> a mountain without a creek. So they just spawn when mountains spawn, I think. But you know, whatever. And Sam catches him, and Sam's like, "That's my brother's amulet. Why do you have my brother's amulet? There's no way my brother would have given you yeah. that amulet. Yeah. Where did it come from?" And like Sammy, like any thirteen-year-old, hollers for his brother, who comes running and is like, "That's my." That's my necklace. What the fuck? He's like, what happened to me? What happened to me? And then I think it's Sam that clocks it, right? Yeah, Sam is the little Sammy clocks it. Yeah. So they get get caught out. So they have to be like, all right, yeah, okay. We're you from the future. We don't know why we're here either. Sorry. But let's just crack on and get this shit done. So, of course, little Sammy is my favorite. I love him. (laughs) He's like, can you tell us? What can you tell us? Yeah, what, what happens? happens? Yeah. Da, 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 da. And they're like, mm-hmm. no, we can't. No, we're not. No, we're not. We'll break you. No, mm-hmm. we're not telling you anything. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and they're, they're still making their way up the mountain. And it's, it's, a, it's a long track. I think it takes them like seven days to get to the top. One of my favorite things about it is the way that the author's particularly picking season five to set this up in mm-hmm. is that Season five, Sam and Dean are so fractured and they're so angry with each other. And then you put that next to baby Sam and Dean. And I think it just highlights the fracture all the more. Yeah. And it, you know, it's, it's, it's really, it's really good. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. we've got like season five, Sam and Dean, who are kind of like, you know, not really talking to each other and, you know, just kind of kind of trying to avoid each other mm-hmm. whereas obviously dean is macho manning it all over the place looking after his brother and and yada 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 and it's 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 really it really it's really compelling it really yeah. draws you in yeah so like it's it's very rare that i find a fic that i'm like came for the plot stayed for the pawn you know i'm mm-hmm. always like i came for the pawn and i hung around for the plot mm-hmm. i think i would have read this had there been no pawn whatsoever yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I was, I, I was totally would've. like, was like, I, it, that, that to me, I mean, it, it was great and amazingly written, but I would have, I would have read this without that too, because I think it was so good. It was just such a good story. And so, I mean, we just keep saying that, but there's a part when all of, all of the pieces start to fall into place about them and explaining who they are, where you get, you get to see that Dean is whittling something. and. I loved this so much because when when the pieces started popping in little by little and they started like talking about that it was going to turn into this dog and I was like, what the hell is up with this dog? And then tying this back into a time travel situation where that becomes Sam's dog and Sam Sam makes reference to this dog. They like it, it's it's a great little piece about like all the little things you pick up as a kid somebody else is just kind of like throwaway stuff. And he mentions a whole, like he mentions a crossword puzzle book that, you know, wasn't filled out very well by the former owner and different things like that. And then he mentions like a little wooden dog that he had. And as the story goes on, I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but there's one scene where Dean's like whittling and I think it's his POV, but I don't know for sure. But Sam says to him, oh, that looks like the dog that I had. And Dean doesn't remember, you know, this dog. And he's like, you had a dog like this? He's like, yeah, I don't remember it. And Sam's like, oh, whatever. That becomes a thing later on. And I love those little, I love those little parts in the fact that one of the chapters is labeled the fat dog at the very end. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, it, it it sort of ties everything together, but in such a heartbreaking way as well for mm. um, the younger Sam and Dean. So it's around this time, it's not, they're not in the intoxication phase. I mean, they're not in the lust phase yet, right? They're in, still in the drought phase. And mm-hmm. young Dean 
goes, I can't remember why, but goes to talk to Sam in private. And yeah. do you want to say, do you want to explain what happens in, in this, <laughs> in this part? Yeah. 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 So Sam, Sam's been clocking young Dean, you know, eyeballing him all over the show and, and you know, not like suspiciously, like very much with lost eyeballing him. And like Sandra says, I also can't remember why, but it, it, it ends up that, that young Sam and uh, no young Dean and all the, there's too many Sam and Dean's keep dragging bloody out. Yeah. That young Dean and all the Sam end up having a conversation. And that is the point when Dean loses 103% of his shit. And he just, just has like a breakdown and kisses older Sam, you know. And older Sam is like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And Dean is like, I, I'm sorry, you're just so big. I, what? Sorry. Sorry, sorry. And Sam storms off and Dean goes back and older Dean sort of collars younger Dean and is like, what the fuck did you do? Mm -hmm. So I think that might be like the next morning because I think Sam comes back and he's like extra weird with older Dean. I think it happens immediately after. I think I think what happens is they can't Sam doesn't come back. Um, but I think young Dean comes back and he starts apologizing. Young Dean does. And he says, mm -hmm. he says, you know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just and you know, and Sam keeps saying to him, You gotta believe me, I'm your brother. And he's like, I know. And he, you know, he's like, yeah. So then he goes back. I'm I'm trying to like skip, I'm trying to find it. So this is this is where it becomes Dean's Dean's point of view. Young Dean comes in to the campgrounds. He's like, we've got to talk now. And yeah, he basically tells him, I fucked up. He fesses I up. fucked up yeah, really bad. He's like, what did right. you do? And he's like, you know, I kissed him. And Dean was like, mine. <laughs> and <laughs> young yeah. Dean is like yours. And he's like, immediately, like, I could feel how Dean's walls were just crumbling around him because everything that he talks about, he's like, I've been holding on to this and keeping this a secret for all this time. And you, and you it. did this. And yeah. he's like, you know, and then he's like, well, how did he react? Like, and then the next thing's like, well, how did he react? And he's like, well, he just shoved me away. And Dean keeps saying stuff like, I was careful. I've been so fucking careful. And so this is when you, I mean, of course, enlightenment, you know, you're realizing Dean has been dealing with this for a while. And the fact that he's been dealing yeah. with this at 17 starts to like really, just really kind of like messes with my head space too about, oh my gosh, how long has he been? feeling this way. Yes. And yeah. how much as Dean, do you know he's going to be killing himself over this? And yeah, I know everybody gets, there's a lot of people that just are just so opposed to Wincest, but I really think as we always talk about it, you've got to understand the context of this story and how great, um, and what I mean by great, I mean like grand and layered it is and the relationship between the brothers that it really they're so fucked up like there's like that all their whole entire lives are just so fucked up and they need each other so badly and they're intertwined so much that I don't think this is a hard thing to pull out of canon you know it's it's just no. not um and Dean's love care purpose in life you know has been Sam and it didn't have to be this other part, but in, in this situation, in this story, he loves him and he's wanted him for a very long time. And we're talking, mm. you know, this is a 17 year old Dean and a 13 year old Sam. So that immediately, you know, I could totally see him struggling with himself so badly and yeah. they even talk about the things that he's done. He's tried to, he's looked into like, what did he call it? Conversion therapy and different things like that. Because he's like, I can't do this to Sam. I can't 
live like yeah. this. And because he's, he has not, he has not done anything to express his, these feelings to younger Sam. And then everybody else, but younger Sam is basically in on this knowledge for this story. And the basics is don't let, don't let Sammy find out. Sammy can't find don't out. Tell him. But, Which of course leads to a very, very frustrated Sammy, who is probably even at 13, well used to being shut out of conversations between Dean and John, mm-hmm. throwing quite a few bitch fits to the tune of why are you avoiding me? Yeah. Which is endlessly adorable. Yeah. He is the cutest, the cutest. Yeah. Yeah. And he's, you know, he's characterized so well in how how smart he is, you know, mm-hmm. and it's a cliche because we all we all know that Sam is smart and and Dean is smart as well, but you know it's it's the idea that that Sam's like the ideas man mm-hmm. and so Sam's got the map and the mm-hmm. compass or Sammy rather the baby, mm-hmm. whereas Dean's young Dean is just oh he's just trying to front everything and it's at times it's genuinely painful to read because mm-hmm. you just want to snuggle him up you yeah. just want to burrito him up in a big blanket like baby it's okay. Yeah. It's okay. But his skill set, think, like you said, is is very different. So he's he's able to, yeah. you know, take up the slack in other areas too for that. And they just like they're complimenting each other, you know, present. You could see where all of that started. You can and worked. see this, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The sparks of of so many different facets of their relationship. I gotta say though, you know, we'll we'll keep going over the plot, but in terms of characterization, it is my genuinely my favorite thing to watch young, uh, old, older Sam and Dean see Dean with fresh eyes. Mm-hmm. Sam's perspective, he's the little brother. Mm-hmm. Dean's always been a hero to him. Dean's always been this cocky, confident, swaggering, you know, just absolute badass. So for Sam to be the older one looking at this 17-year-old who is, you know, holding on to this mm-hmm. mask with you know, his fingernails trying to keep it together mm-hmm. and and be able to see that what he saw when he was younger yeah. was not the truth. Yeah. And then for Dean, obviously Dean knew what he was going through internally, but you always think you have it together externally, don't you? You're always yeah. like, nobody can tell. It's yeah. fine. Like, this is fine. This is fine. And he's looking at himself going, holy shit, everybody knew. <laughs> I'm a fucking mess. Mm-hmm. What the hell? Mm-hmm. And I just think that's so. It's such an interesting idea to play with because you would never get the chance to go back and see ten years yourself ten mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. You know, ten years ago. What time of the year are we on? Ten years ago, my mum is about to get diagnosed with cancer. Mm-hmm. In a few months, mm-hmm. I thought that I held my shit together pretty well. But if I went back, I bet I was like, oh my God, babe, you were a mess. Mm -hmm. What the fuck? And I just, it's so, because obviously Sam, Sammy is, he's only 13. Mm -hmm. There's not, not to say that there isn't a character to him, but it's very, he's 13. You know, he's not, he's not bearing the weight of the world on his shoulders in the same way that Dean always has done you know yeah yeah so for Sam to be able to look back and see see all the ways Dean was protecting him and mm-hmm. was really nice. there's slow revelations in in the story and and it's in this conversation too that you you understand from Dean talking with Dean that he still has feelings for Sam this way but he not as often and he's able to kind of keep it in check a little bit more Young Dean asks him, hopefully, like, you know, does it get any better? And he's like, no, it gets way, it gets way, way worse, you know? So yeah. it's just like, you know. Breaks his own heart. Though. Yeah, yeah. And I I find it interesting that Dean is not as, he doesn't seem as careful with his own self. You know what I mean? As I feel like Sam mm. is with both of the boys. Because I feel like he's even, he's, Sam is careful with Sammy, just as he's careful with young Dean. And I think Dean is more like, it's your fault. You should be able to keep this under control. You should be able to handle this. You couldn't even, you couldn't even make it 
two days <laughs> yeah. without. I have been dealing with this for years yeah. and you fucked it in less than a week. Yeah. What the yeah. fuck? And I mean, Dean's anger, he doesn't stay angry with his younger self, but mm-hmm. he is. He is in the initial moment. And then his younger self keeps kind of being like, but why? Why? Yeah. What What do you mean I live with this for, you know, over a day? De- what do you, why haven't we done anything? And Dean's yeah. like, because we fucking haven't. Mm-hmm. Because what if he says no? What? Yeah. No. You yeah. know, and that's, that's Dean's whole thing that like, he can't ask he wouldn't this of dare. Sam. Yeah, and he wouldn't dare yeah. make the first move because he wouldn't want to deal with the consequences of what if it wasn't what he wanted kind of a situation. And then this is when we get an indication that Zachariah comes in, the angel. And so then we start to know it's definite angel, angel intervention, that they've they've done this thing. The character, again, Zachariah is so on point in this. Like the- It's perfect. You can just, you can hear him. And his mannerisms and just just small little things that just conjure up the character. And I was going to say two two things happen, and I can't remember which one happens first. But two things happen. They enter into the the lost aura circle, whatever. Mm -hmm. And Sam is with all this this new knowledge now because Dean won't talk to him about it. Just right. flat refuses to talk. So all Sam's going off is looking back at his memories with this new knowledge of Dean mm-hmm. and trying to, you know, was there a tell? Did he miss something? Mm-hmm. And he ends up, Sam and Dean, season five, Sam and Dean are sharing a tent and maybe Sam and Dean are sharing a tent as well. Sam ends up, you know, I think it's I think it's it's said somewhere that they kind of always end up cuddling if mm-hmm. they have to share a space. Mm-hmm. So this happens and Sam, for whatever reason, I don't even think he's sure himself, just decides he's gonna he's gonna go for it. He's woke up, he's kind of like he he's the big spoon to Dean's mm-hmm. little spoon. And he's he's just gonna gonna go for it. Um yeah. and he ends up jacking Dean off in the tent. Mm-hmm. And Dean is 110% into this, like mm-hmm. all the way into it, and then just refuses to speak to him afterwards. Mm-hmm. Will not speak to him. Well, there's there's, there's there's no conversation, um, no, going on with it at all. And yeah, I think when when Sam wakes up, Dean's not even in the tent. Um, yeah, Sam go. They go back to well. Sam goes back to sleep, mm-hmm. and Dean's gone when he wakes up. And he's like, Dean, um, quick question. And Dean just, just will not engage with him. Will not speak to him. Well, he blames it on that it's the lust. He said it's he, he's just yeah. like it's it's just it's just it's just the lust a circle just the, that we're the in. weird the yeah. weird god stuff yeah yeah the the weirdness and around around the same time young Dean it is young Dean isn't it yeah it is young Dean gets attacked by a cougar mm-hmm. the the feline variety not a, not, not a middle aged lady <laughs> <laughs> the the real the mountain lion puma cougar whatever you want to call it them the, the the yelly things, the felines. Mm-hmm. So yes, you're also a feline. Hello. <laughs> and they um, you know, gets gets quite badly injured. So they're like, ah, fuck, right. Okay. So they try and bandage him up um and try and keep going, but the wounds fester mm-hmm. and there's infection. And of all the things they picked up at the fucking star, and they got this heavily stocked first aid kit, they don't have antibiotics. Mm-hmm. No way to do this. So they're like, well, we, we're gonna have to, we're, we're gonna have to keep going. We're just gonna have to hope he lives until we make it to the top, mm-hmm. and then you, we'll bring him back down and take him to the hospital. And then this this cabin appears out of nowhere. Sam and Dean don't remember it. It's not supposed to be there. It's mm-hmm. like a place out of time. So they decide they're gonna stop at this cabin and get some rest. And it's got like fresh water and blah 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 blah. And so these two things happen around the same time. And this is where Castiel comes into things. Mm-hmm. Dean's still not talking to Sam. Dean's still like, it's just the God thing. We're not talking about this. Blah, 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 blah. Obviously, young Dean is actively dying. So mm-hmm. young Sam is losing 104% of his shit. Mm-hmm. But it's a problem. And up until, I think it's up until maybe before this, they got walkie-talkies. Yeah. And Dean's heard Cass, mm-hmm. their Cass, 2005 Castiel, mm-hmm. on the walkie-talkie. 
but he can't like it's not functioning properly yeah you know, like it's, it's not like cast on the other hand mm-hmm. yeah. yeah they decide that they're gonna try i think they decide they're gonna try and pray to castiel we can call make him heal dean but the castiel they get is not their castiel mm-hmm. it's 96 castiel who is in a female vessel which i mm-hmm. love mm-hmm. i'm here yeah. for that and it yeah. is all the characterization in this fic is fucking on point mm-hmm. so good and it's it's season five yeah it's like season four castiel on steroids so just right. like why why are you here mm-hmm. why have you summoned me you're not supposed to be here what is this mm-hmm. you know they're like can you help and she's like he dies and then just leaves mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um and then comes back a little while later and is like i have been advised to heal the winchester boy um and they're like you fuck it like can you take us to the top can you fix this can you send us back what is happening and she's like no no i will do they i suppose mm-hmm. no I, I will do none of these things i was told to fix the boy and, and nothing else mm-hmm. so that deals with the dean situation it also raises a lot more questions because young sam and dean are like what do you fucking mean angels are real what mm-hmm. they don't say that it's i don't an think they yet. say it's an angel yeah. yeah yeah before so in between before Cass. When Cass shows up the first time and then before Cass comes back again is when you've got the, they're, they're in the cabin. Sam decides to take a bath in the outside tub. A ba- bath. Dean's out in picking wood. Outside. Dean's out grabbing wood and very, very, very glorious scene. And Dean chances upon Sam getting out. Yeah, now and out the tub. Sam tries to push it a little bit, see if he can get, you know, a reaction or something out of him. Dean's very like all business, whatever. They get pissed off again at each other. Dean goes out to go chop some wood. Sam goes to find him. (laughs) And they have it out again. And then Sam makes the first move again. Mm -hmm. And in the process, Dean ends up blowing Sam. Um, it's super fucking hot. It is. Like we're not it doing is. it any justice no. whatsoever. No, because because you just need to read it because it's yeah, it's it's um, That's so good. it's amazing. It's amazing. And there's so many like parts to why like they they haven't kissed yet. You know, it's like that's a thing that's like that's harped on about is that they're 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 doing these other things but they haven't done this one thing even though they're like so close and like foreheads touching mm. they do forehead touching a lot which just makes my heart hurt when they touch uh, their forehead yeah. so much you know young young sam and dean do it older sam and dean do it and it's this it's this it's constant cute. like just tr- dean's trying so just hard to kiss you fools back you know like that kind of a thing yeah. too and so they they know it's the lust the lust thing has something to do with why why sam just can't seem to like turn it off either like you know so they they know there's a part of that to it but it's like it's just like triggered all of these other things um yeah that for dean has have been dormant for so so very long too and again the not wanting to instigate the not wanting to do things first so sam is doing a majority of the instigating for a while yeah so then Cass comes back was told they were told I had to come back and heal this kid for whatever reason, heal young yeah. Dean. And then they continue on their journey and on the journey again, a lot of character stuff, but a lot more of Sam. Like I liked Sam in this because he seemed so free in this situation. Like he was just, mm. he was embracing and experimenting. And you know, the fact that he'd never had thoughts about any other guy before like this like nothing nothing had ever been a thing and he assumes which i love he assumes dean has had experience because he's like yes. he's so good with he was so good at it he must have he must have dabbled in this stuff before and i think it's another one of their trysts like Indeed. in the forest um dean's like seems like well you know i it's it's my first time yeah it's- sam's sam's gonna blow dean and he's yeah. like um you know, be, be be gentle with me. This is like this is my first time. And Dean's like, "What?" And mm-hmm. Sam's like, "Well, you you you've done this before." And he's like, "What exactly gave you the <laughs> idea that I had done this before?" And Sam is Sam is really honest with him. You know, mm-hmm. he's like, "I can't imagine you wanting something like this." 
mm-hmm. and not going and getting it. And it just like blows Sam's mind that Dean has harbored this yeah. this lust for Sam. This is, I mean, it's love, but we're talking about the lust in this moment, mm-hmm. and not gone and tried to try to do anything with anybody else. And Dean's like, nope. And I, I think it. that again makes it a very specific Sam and Dean situation. Like, I mean, you could argue then that, you know, I, I mean, whatever might be going on with Dean in this particular situation, like there's no other guy that he would be this attracted to. He's curious about it. And he, he watches things, I think, because he's got these feelings of Sam and mm he doesn't necessarily there's a that there's that machismo thing right like you know well i can't i wouldn't do something like this or probably like a john thing behind behind the situation too like in his mind that you know yeah he wouldn't go out and 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 get that anyway so it's it's just that that little piece of information was just like oh like you know okay he yeah. hasn't he hasn't with any other guy it's just Sam. Just the Sam. That was a big like mic drop moment for me too. Like, oh, you know, and yeah. I think that's what makes it so. I mean, we could go on and on about it, but that's what makes it so very. Their bond is so great, and I think this, I think this story just does an amazing job helping them put the pieces back together, and Sam. Then Sam questioning himself too, like looking back at his own self, like was, was there any point when I might have been, and I didn't realize it, or I didn't understand it, that I could have been feeling the same feelings, but he doesn't recall anything. And their memories, Sam's memories don't, don't keep, Sam's memories of the events are still back to he'd gotten heat stroke and all that. So nothing that they seem to be doing is changing that. The initial memories, their, their memories from before of 1996, even though they're doing all of these things with you know, young Sam and Dean and all of that, nothing seems to be changing. And that's when I was, I started thinking about, you know, the fact that whenever the angels seem to bring, whether it's past or, or future, they don't seem to be able to change the past. And I was like, well, so if that's, you know, that would be why the original timeline is sticking the way it's sticking, but then it doesn't make sense. I'm like, you know, they're actually interacting with themselves there's a whole bunch of other things. There's a whole bunch of other circles and stuff. I think that they keep getting into. And again, more and more information. I wanted to ask you because in one of the mentions in one of the Dean chat Dean chapters, I think the authors, you know, calls Dean an unreliable narrator. But I mm. didn't, I didn't get that. I I got the, I just got that he was fronting. His yeah, feelings, I didn't, I did. You know. I didn't get unreliable narrator yeah. from that. But yeah. I think that may be what they were driving at. Yeah. How Dean is trying to portray things mm-hmm. is not necessarily accurate because mm-hmm. he is fronting. He is trying to be like, no, no. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. no. You know. Because at first I was like, to- oh, maybe he has had experiences and he just hasn't said anything to Sam. Because then I could see unreliable narrator, unless he's talking about the past and just trying to refashion it. A certain way in his mm. head but I don't get that I get all of the angst from Dean and get all of the this is what I was trying to not do or, or hold you know hold back so I don't know I didn't get as much unreliable narrator as just all the all the all the poor feelings for for Dean and what he was going through um when he was mm. younger so I don't know I just I just was wondering if you if you if you caught something that I missed maybe um, no I didn't happens I- <laughs> <laughs> I didn't particularly. I didn't particularly find Dean to be an unreliable narrator. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but again, it's he is trying to manipulate the past to look the way he wants it to look, and trying to explain it away. And no, yeah. it wasn't this; it was this. Mm-hmm. You know, because he doesn't. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want to be confronted by this. Yeah, he doesn't yeah. want this. To, if if he'd had his way, this would never have happened. Sam yeah. would never have known. He would have taken it to his grave. Yeah, and it is. It it does end up actually being young Dean that um bursts that bubble completely. Yeah, um, by fessing it up to Sam and being like, "Look, he's being an asshole because he's in love with you, mm-hmm. and he's scared to death to take that step because what if you reject him? You know, and it's 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 deeper. It's deeper than that. 
because it's, it's not so much what if Sam just rejects him off the bat. It's what if Sam agrees and then changes his mind. Yeah. yeah. Dean's always going to feel like he pressured Sam into it. Like, you know, he forced Sam's hand in some way. Yeah. And young Dean does does fess all that up to to older Sam who's like, Yeah, you know what, actually that tracks. Yeah. 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 Well, that makes sense. Mm-hmm. But we're we're still we're still making our way up the mountain. Little Sammy's still getting pissed off that, you know, everyone keeps sending him away to have conversations. Mm-hmm. Young Dean is trying to play matchmaker between Sam, Sam and Dean. Mm-hmm. Dean's trying to avoid every bit of this. Mm-hmm. And Sam's just like, Yeah, maybe, you know. Mm-hmm. And I think Sam Sam attributes his um, blaseness to the lust as well. Mm-hmm. He's like he he's examining his own feelings, but he is aware that he's examining them in an intoxicated state. Mm-hmm. You know, because Dean Dean puts that at him quite a few times. You're just horny and just go jerk off. You don't want this, so it it leaves it leaves me in an interesting quandary of how much is how much is real and how much is is just. The, the interference of the place. Yeah, yeah. Because but then we, in the middle you know, of it, they get intoxicated. Then that's the next thing. They start to get intoxicated and then there's another whole layer to that. Yeah. So they're getting out of the the lust and into the intoxication. And there seems getting, to be like residual. <laughs> yeah. There's leftovers of that. Yeah, yeah. But they're getting they're getting close to, close to the, the top of the mountain now where what they think they're going for is some kind of Mormon um shit me what like a compound it? yeah mm-hmm. well yeah like a compound like a commune kind of thing mm-hmm. and they think that this this pagan god kills this to everybody in in this this compound and that's what they're there to stop mm-hmm. so they they're they're aware of a time limit on this and as they get further up the mountain things are getting really weird now so mm-hmm. little sammy loses their map mm-hmm. which is nobody can figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. Nobody can figure out why this might have happened. And some little Sammy starts acting weird. He starts acting creepy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's creepy, yeah. Sammy. It is. It's creepy, Sammy. Sandra's, Sandra's notes are younger Sam is getting creepy in the <laughs> intoxication circle. What's up with that? I don't like creepy kids, which is something that I would say because one of my rules for horror movies in my house is I won't watch anything that's got clowns in it. Although I have broken that rule because I did watch the remake of it and I didn't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I did fucking, and then I went back and watched the second one and I was I don't know why I did this. I didn't enjoy the first part of this. Why have I done this? So I don't watch shit with I don't watch shit with clowns. Mm-hmm. But you could you could get me to bend on that one. But the one you will never get me to bend on is creepy children, mm. possessed children, ghost children, children being creepy in mm-hmm. any way. No, I have children. I know what it's like to wake up at 3 a.m. with a face next to yours standing by the bed mm. or to not be facing and to just wake up on and, you know, like, you know, when someone's watching you mm-hmm. and then to, to have that feeling and roll over and be like, what? what? I know what that's like. I don't seek that out as entertainment. Now, I didn't particularly find little Sammy to be that creepy, but it, it he, he was like he kept like disappearing and dean was having hallucinations about like that that part was creepy when yeah the, with with sam and young sammy and dean which it was him it without that part wasn't a hallucination like but then he got snapped like he got shoved off and there was a totally yeah. different you know attitude about yeah. it but it was it was almost like somebody else was like you know pulling, pulling the, the strings. strings yeah yeah because yeah. that that was that was what it was sam dean falls behind i think he wants i think he wants a bit of time to himself yeah because sam's just been all over <laughs> yeah he's like just leave me alone fucking hell and he gets he gets turned around in the forest and he gets so he's he's tracking them through the forest which i think mm-hmm. is one of dean's talents that we very rarely saw in the show mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but i have to figure like he's probably a good a good tracker but sam sam's not like little sammy sort of, like meets him halfway and kind of like comes on to him and like you know like sits in his lap and starts taking taking a shot off and dean like freaks completely and just like shoves him off mm-hmm. and that's when sam's sort of like 
Sammy, baby Sam. So well, he like, says something to, to him. him like, yeah, he says something to him like, "You'll you'll take care of me when where you, you'll make sure I'm safe when or it's time." Like that. Yeah, or yeah. when it's time. Yeah, some weird like weird stuff, and it's just like, "What weird, is going on?" Like, yeah, creepy child prophecy. Yeah, like, it's just it's yeah. all it's all weird. It's all weird. It's yeah. weird. It's weird. So he he like after that he collars young Dean and he's like, "You don't let him out of your sight. Do not. You keep an eye on him. Do not let him leave." And he was like, I didn't let him leave. We turned around and he was gone. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, you know, it's get, it's getting weird, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, that particular one wasn't a hallucination, but I'm sure there is one that is a hallucination. Um, I just know there were like points where like Dean, like Sammy was outside of the tent like one night and just kind of like didn't respond to him. And I don't even know if he turned around. It was just, it was weird. Like his behavior was weird. I don't think he hallucinated it's those things. Weird. I think he just, yeah his his interactions with him were there was something different going on than the usual yeah. sammy yeah so we're we're getting up to the the peak of the mountain now and we've still got this season five sam and dean trying to sam's trying to get dean to talk and dean's like no 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 not even a little bit mm-hmm. young sammy's going weird and then on top of all that they're also like so how are we going to kill this thing? Yeah. Dean's like, how do you... <laughs> yeah. Young Dean is like, how do you kill a pagan god? And they're like, uh, we're just going to set it on fire. Mm-hmm. Um, might work, might not, but we'll find out when we get there. Young Dean is not happy with this plan, by the way. he's mm-hmm. <laughs> This is not what he wants to do. He's like, I would like a, a better plan. And they're like, well, we don't have one. So yeah. <laughs> And they've they've got like they've got this idea they've lost the map but they're man- they're managing to figure out like where they need to go and and what's going to happen and stuff. And then we get to to the summit to the peak. Little Sammy just takes off, and they have a plan and they're going to be like stealthy, stealthy and go in and you know try and just just catch her. With I, they took like kerosene with them for this yeah. reason. The the one thing that happens though before like everybody's so not paying attention to Sammy because it's at this point where this is, this is where the kiss happens. This is where oh. young Dean has another, like, cause they've, again, you, you go back and forth, you, you get into Dean's head in a chapter and they're, they're in the tent, they start talking and, you know, Dean's just like, and Sam's like, well, why, why do you never start? Why do you never, why do you never instigate? Why don't, why aren't you starting? And he doesn't really cop to, mm-hmm. you know, reasons why that happens later with, with young Dean. Um, and then they, they wake up that morning. And I think Dean does, he is the one that, that starts it um, first. And mm. they, they battle, they, it, it comes to a head again. They start arguing again. Dean walks off. No, everybody's forgotten about Sammy. Because Dean, because the young Dean goes back and talks to Sam, and then I, I think it's that um, where Sam just like runs, runs to find Dean, and it's just like, do you trust me? And mm. you know, Dean I says think yes, that's... and I think that's like the kiss, right? That's like the kiss, then that's like the big toe, the and then yeah, <laughs> where Sammy? I think that that conversation might be when young Dean is like, he's an old fucking mm-hmm. idiot. Mm-hmm. that's why he's being like this mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah that's like the big like the big crescendo bit yeah. of yeah. that side of the story mm-hmm. and then we're on top and sam takes off they lose the element of surprise they're like ah oh, fuck and then when they get there everybody's dead mm-hmm. and they're like we're too late mm-hmm. fuck now what and that's when it all comes together and it's fucking masterful mm. because the things with Zachariah and the things with Cass it's season five mm-hmm. they could just be fucking with shit you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but they're not mm-hmm. there's Zachariah with Sammy and he villain monologues like a fucking champion he does he does it's a fair play to this author it is a gold yeah. star villain monologue it is about how they figured out that they're never going to get Sam and Dean. Uh, well, they're never going to get Dean to say yes. So Even they the sent Michael them back sword. in time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're going to, they're going to kill little Sammy. So Dean grows up broken mm-hmm. and then he will be begging them to help them. This, well, Zachariah this is Zachariah. just like, it's like, you guys have got to pick one. It's one Sam. It's one of these Sams has got to go yeah. like situation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Either, either it's going to be, 
2005 Sam and Dean will just break because he's dead. Mm -hmm. Or it's going to be 96 Sam and Dean's going to grow up broken. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. So you got to pick one. And like, Zach, Zachary is using all his angel powers to keep them all pressed down. And there's blood and, and there's a whole thing. I think he's going to make Dean do it, isn't he? Yeah, so Sammy, Sammy's yeah. been in like sort of like this catatonic state, right? Like I, I think even him going up there was because of probably just the pull from Zachariah yeah, or from whatever Zachariah. to get up there. So he finally sort of like breaks out of her. Zachariah like breaks him out of it and starts starts monologuing a little bit more about what's going on and says, you know, the worst thing I could have him do would be to kill you, you know, himself. So we're gonna that yeah. that that would literally make sure he's so utterly broken. That he had, yeah. he would have no choice but to say yes uh, to becoming the with Michael the great Ford. with the great line. It can't be anything good therapy can fix. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is you know yeah. masterful villainy. Yeah, yeah. And I forgot how bad of a. I mean, I I never liked Zachariah, but he's just so such an asshole. So horrible in this, and yeah. and then and then he ends up he ends up telling young Sammy about the feelings that Dean's had for him. Yeah. And, you know, and Dean is just like, they're all crumpled on the floor, all in pain. And young Dean is struggling to try to tell Sam not to listen. No, Sammy. It's not true. You know, it's not yeah. true. Then Zachariah kind of manipulates him up. I love that the author took so many things that have happened in the show and kind of like just distilled it into sort of this big, like, cause I keep thinking about Chuck manipulating Eileen to have to go and like cut out the part in Sam that connected Chuck to Sam. So I like, mm. I, I get all of these different things and about how they were probably going to have the same sort of revelations in heaven towards the end, like different revelations. And it's, it's happening in this time travel, you know, sort of moment and all of this stuff that keeps coming up again and again. And yeah, so Dean is going to have to stab Sammy and and kill him, young Dean. And they're hoping because at this point they've they've they feel like they've made enough connection. They feel that Cass knows something's wrong because Cass has come in like at another point in another one of the walkie talkies. So they they think that Cass is like if they pray to him enough, he's going to be able to locate them or whatever. So they're holding out on on that being a thing, you know, that Cass is going to come. And I think what ends up happening is Dean's Dean's getting ready to stab Sam. I don't know if Cass has come in at that point yet or not, but I know that there's a situation where the knife, you tell me, do you think Dean did that to himself or do you think it just happened accidentally where he just slices himself open on his, on his arm and Let starts me- bleeding out? Let me go back and have another look. Because I always question that. I'm like, was he just finally like, I've got to, I've just got to do this. Was he, I myself? think, I think he might have been fighting so hard. That it just went back that way. Yeah. The, and, yeah. When, and the, when the rubber band snapped a little as bit. it was. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Let me just, went back. We'll, I, I'm pretty sure too, but I was just like, it wouldn't have, it wouldn't have surprised me if Dean was, you know, trying to sacrifice himself, you know, yet again that way but it, it didn't seem like he'd done it on purpose but i was just you just never know but yeah i could i could understand then him fighting back and you know the pull and then if if there was just a small s- spot where zachariah like lost the connection or ability to have them do his bidding it could have just happened on reflex where he just went back with the knife but he basically slices, slices himself just like from wrist to it's it's a uh, yeah well it's it's an accident because mm-hmm. Zach- zachariah monologuing about how it's going to be like this and and older sam is like we're not losing our memories you're not changing the timeline Mm -hmm. this is not what's happening and in that moment zachariah loses focus on controlling dean Mm -hmm. um so dean's like kind of just like yanked the knife Mm -hmm. away to to get it because i think it was like pressed into sam's chest Mm -hmm. so he's just done anything to get it away and he's his hand slipped yeah and he's he's caught himself mm-hmm. so dean and we're not we're not talking like a little bit we're talking like no. young dean has opened himself from wrist to elbow yeah yeah there's a lot of blood 
Yeah. And that's when Cass chimes in. That's mm-hmm. when Cass appears and there's a fight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So obviously Dean goes, Dean goes down like a sack of spuds. Mm-hmm. Little Sammy goes, goes with him, you know, like trying to just like, you know, stop the bleeding, cover the wound. Cass, Sam and Dean are fighting Zachariah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sam saves the day, makes an angel banishing sigil with mm-hmm. blood from his hand, tells Cass to go, banishes Zachariah. And then, oh, fuck. Yet again, Dean is dying. Did Cass get away in time or has he been banished? They need mm-hmm. him to come back yesterday to heal Dean. Yeah. And the author keeps you on this pinprick. Yeah. It feels like for so long on this knife edge, is it going to, have they gone through all this and Dean's still going to die? Mm-hmm. And if he dies... What happens? And young you know? Dean is just like, are you okay, Sammy? Are you okay? Like, he's still yeah. worried about Sammy. And I'm just like, oh. And Sammy's just like, That's just bawling crazy. his eyes out. And it's just like, you know, I can't remember if there isn't any discussion. I don't know if he asks him. I can't remember as he's dying. Like, you know, is it true? And I think, isn't that the thing? Like, I think not in so many words, but Dean young Dean does tell him, I think right as he's getting, like he could be on his deathbed, like not in so many words, but enough that he says it, that Sam understands that what Zachariah had said was true. You know, Mm -hmm. that he is, he is in love with Sammy. And then Cass comes back. That's not, that doesn't happen when Dean is still bleeding out. It doesn't, it happens after. It's after. Okay. So what happens is Cass comes back in the in the nick of time and heals heals Dean. And he explains to them that he 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 knew that they'd gone. He knew Zachariah had something to do with it, but it was all warded. He couldn't find them. So he was just trying to, you know, trying trying to get through, trying to trying to break down the, the wall effectively mm-hmm. to get to them. And you know, banish Zachariah and and Sam and Dean. Older Sam and Dean ask Cass, like, what happens now? What happens to them? Mm-hmm. And Cass goes, well, they grow up. They're you. And everyone's like, what? And that is when Cass drops the bombshell, which is, mm-hmm. oh, it's a time travel fix. So you don't expect to be surprised by the ending of it. But I was like, whoo, mm-hmm. it's always, it's always this. They always get sent back. To 1996 and they do this thing they have this showdown there's only one timeline this always happens Cass always comes in and saves the day mm-hmm. and just takes the kids memories away mm-hmm. and they think that they attempted this trip and they were unprepared Sam got heat stroke and then they had to leave mm-hmm but it's not. It's always been. It's always been this way. So that happens. Poor Sam. He's like, we forget everything. We forget this whole week. Mm-hmm. You know, the people, the people in the in the compound, they always die. Yeah. Sam and Dean in two thousand and nine will remember, but nineteen ninety six, Sam and Dean won't. They will yeah. just think the hunt goes wrong. Yeah, and it's it's after that that they they ask for some time and Cass Mm -hmm. is you can have a few minutes and it's in those few minutes that they sort of say it's in those few minutes that Dean gives little Sam the dog that he's whittled Mm -hmm. on the journey Mm -hmm. as well and the cycle comes comes again which is you know it's oh it's so nice. I don't think Sam actually does does ask Dean if it's if it's true. Uh, I'm skim I'm skimming over it now. See, I feel like I something know. was just like something was expressed, but it wasn't like oh, here it is. Okay, so Sammy, all snot and tears, looked up from the knife and into the younger Dean's face, only a couple feet from his own. He said, "Do you? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Sammy. Please." That wasn't oh. no. There was no sense in lying at the yeah. end. Yeah, knew that. So they, I they, I was wrong yeah. and I had misinterpreted that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's like like that's as close to Dean 
basically being like, well, I'm not going to tell you no, you know, but, you know, and then I think they only yeah. have those few minutes to kind of like. Because that's, that's before, mm-hmm. that's be- that happens before Dean manages to wrench the knife away. So that's, this is going to be Zachariah's big soul crushing moment. Mm-hmm. That Sam's going to die knowing mm-hmm. that Dean wants him in what heaven considers to be a, mm-hmm. an impure way. Yeah. And this this is going to be this big crushing moment. Yeah. Yes. yes. And then they have, Cal says they've got a few minutes and they have a conversation and they're all like, well, I don't know what to say. Mm-hmm. Um, but he gives, g- Dean gives Sam, Sammy, the uh, the little dog. Mm-hmm. And Cass comes and says, you know, it's, it's okay. It's going to be fine. You're going to wake up back in the house with John seven days ago none of this has happened for you mm-hmm. um Sam and Dean you back in they're in North Dakota in 2009 it's called <laughs> and then that's it but that's not it no it's an epilogue no. and the epilogue is hands down like one of my favorite parts so they go back and it's a bit it's weird isn't it mm-hmm. what do you say when you've just spent a week with your your younger selves mm-hmm. and you've had all these revelations and oh was it real or was it you know was it just just Zachariah's manipulation you know what yeah. what was it so they kind of they have they stay in the motel in South Dakota and mm-hmm. they have a day to themselves and they just drink and eat and watch shit TV mm-hmm. and they're dancing around the topic mm-hmm. of what had happened yeah it's I, I love it yeah I love it and no. I love the way that Sam is like because Sam can openly admit he's like I miss them mm-hmm. and Dean's like you can't miss them they're us we're here yeah and he's like no I'm I miss him it's okay for you to miss them as well because I think you probably would bond with your younger self yeah in a situation like that you know yeah. as annoying of- as annoying as Dean felt that they were he still bonded with them you know like I think even if he was annoyed yeah. with himself he was still and just like young Dean would never admit you know if if he still had the memories that he was going to miss them you know like he would he would mm. he would he would slash that off too and be like no I don't miss them yeah you know and I think mm-hmm. I think if you could go back all those years, you'd you'd want to say all the things that you needed to hear mm-hmm. at that time in your life, and then it would it would all be for naught in the end because mm-hmm. you you wouldn't you wouldn't remember being told all the things you needed yeah. to hear. Yeah. So I imagine that's you know that's that's kind of kind of a gut punch. But um, they kind of, they just mope around the motel like all day and, and drink. And Sam, Sam is over this. Sam is like, nope, they would not want us to do this. They mm-hmm. would be pissed if they knew that we were sulking in a motel room after everything that, that we went through. Mm-hmm. Get up, we're going out. Mm-hmm. They're in pajamas. Dean's in his pants. Dean's this in is his crucial. boxers, I think. Yeah, Dean's yeah. in his boxers and a shirt. I think Sam's in, in sweatpants. Mm-hmm. And Sam just gets the keys to the Impala and is like, come on, we're going for a drive. He's like, don't you Which drive my car? He's like, you are not driving my car. Ridiculous scene. Yep. Sam's getting in the Impala, and Dean is standing in the doorway of the motel, going, "Don't drive my car. Get out of my car. Don't you drive my car." And Sam's mm-hmm. like, "I'm driving it. You get me." Mm-hmm. And it's great. And I know, I think it's always implied that Sam might be a slightly better driver than Dean. <laughs> Just like. <laughs> Maybe a little bit, but what actually happens is it's a is they're in the middle of a blizzard in North mm-hmm. Dakota, and mm-hmm. it's a really big deal. And Sam, he, his plan is to drive down the road. The roads are empty, mm-hmm. and he's going to drive down the road. And as he's driving down the road, Dean's like, "Yeah, all right, all right, all right. No, turn the car around, get out." Mm-hmm. So Sam's just gonna gonna turn the car around, like really big semicircle in the middle of the road, and just drive back to himself. And then what happens is. Nope. Like he crashes it into a snowbank. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Dean loses all of his shit about it. And it is, oh my God, it's so good. It is so good. But it's so the cutest good. because like Sam Sam shuts him up by by kissing him. And then they finally yeah. like have their, I think, I guess you would say like proper kiss, like in the, in it back in, you know, the real world and stuff like that. And 
Yeah, it's no, just it's, it's it's Dean that kisses Sam. Is it Dean? It's because he's because yeah. he's so upset. <laughs> he's just so upset. <laughs> so they just say it's uh Sam's it's gonna, a great line. It's snowing, yeah, I remember. It's snowing really hard mm-hmm. and he's just going to turn around the intersection and he loses the car on the ice. Mm-hmm. And Dean reacts to this perfectly by grabbing hold of him. Mm-hmm. So Sam's trying to like control the the you know the the spin of the car. And we're talking about a 67 Chevy. Yeah. It's got no it, it don't have ABS. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have fucking anything. Mm-hmm. It's manual to the car this baby. So she skids out on him. Um and she thought, like goes nose first into a snowbank, <laughs> and Dean's response like it's quiet for a minute, and then Dean goes very quietly, "You crashed my car." <laughs> Sam's going, "I bumped it gently into a <laughs> snowbank. You crashed my. It was a bump. It's not even." And then Dean, Dean kissed him. him. It's yeah. the cutest. Yeah, it is the cutest. Genuinely the cutest. And they, they have they have a nice kiss in the in the front seat, and Sam's like, "I have wanted to do that all day." Mm-hmm. Dean responds, "I've wanted to do that for fifteen years." Yeah. And it's the fucking cutest. Yeah, it, it is. is the cutest. It is. It is the cutest. And then, and then there's just a whole you lot know, of great smut after after yeah. that, but very very romantic smut, and very so like Dean you know, giving in, which I think he normally does to Sammy too, but giving in mm. and they're just, it's really nice. It's a really, it's a really lovely story. It's all the things, you know, I think we, we want happiness for the boys yeah. and their happiness I think is each other. And even if it's going to be, I think Sam says something or has a line in his thoughts where it's like, you know, I can't imagine being like this all the time with him, but you know, he he wants to, he wants to know what it would be like, you know, if they like the things they can do, like when they're on a hunt now or our possibilities or like times they'll be able to skip away and do this or, or do that. Or, 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 you know, like once the, the, the romantic part of it starts to just become dampens a little bit and they are just with each other and that's stuff that they want. And again, like, I think Dean's overall fear, like, well, what if you don't want this anymore and I'm still stuck with it? You know, like that's the thing. And it's that running away. And that's like that season one Dean of going, I just want my family together, Sam. I just want us together. And all of those themes of the show distilled into this like beautiful little love story between these Mm. very gorgeous men that have a lot of baggage, but I think can handle the baggage when they're, when they're together and when they trust each other. And it's really nice. It's really nice. I'm so glad it that, is. um, I'm so glad we got the recommendation for so many reasons. It's, it's, it's a story that'll stick with me. The, the time travel thing really did mess me up for a little while. Cause this morning I was like, well, wait a minute. I'm like, I get that it's a loop. I'm like, but you know, is there going to be a one version of young Sam and Dean that keep getting brought back to start over again and start over again and then just other stuff offshoots? I'm like, Sandra, stop thinking about it. It's too much. <laughs> Don't do that to your brain. Don't do that to your brain. But yeah, I um, I did love the twist about, like I said, I was figuring like, well, nothing can change. How does it, how does that work out? And then I was like, oh, the dog, the dog is going to come. Back and then yeah, the dog. it was. Back. It was. It was lovely. Such that just this little, this little thing, and the the idea that Dean does this because he has nothing else to do. Mm-hmm. They can only they can only walk for so long. They're not Superman, mm-hmm. you know. And there's mm-hmm. no there. It's 1996. There's no fucking internet, mm-hmm. or if there is, it ain't it ain't in your pocket you know mm-hmm. there's nothing to do mm-hmm. so he just falls back on just creating something well they made hands. they made the comment that i think the first time the first time he starts whittling is actually when bobby shows him how to do it and it's when sam has gone away to college like so that's yeah. like when he starts doing it yeah I'm, I'm just i'm trying to find the 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 mention where sam sam talks about the statue 
It was one of the many pieces of ephemera they found on their travels, things a kid's sticky fingers picked up and then discarded just as easily. Kitsch that other motel guests left behind in drawers, things they found on park benches, mindless gifts. Sam toted the poorly made wooden dog statue through 20 states in his mid-teens. Uh, so just like knowing that that was with him, you know, and it was, it was Dean's, you know, Dean had made that for him. He was like, yeah, my luck talisman thing, the fat dog. And yeah. he's like, that's not why you're making it. He's like, no, I don't remember yours. Yeah. Something important about the fabric of space time and his lucky fat dog. But Dean's eyes left his and dropped to his mouth into his chest and back up. <laughs> and suddenly it seemed like they were sitting a lot closer than they had been. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hats off to this author. All the things. Do, do, do they have more stuff? I mean, I'm assuming they've, yeah, they they've written more things. Okay. Okay. Because I'll do. be they've written I'll be reading their things. I've read um another one of their fix, which is called Blood Sacrifice Sex Magic type of thing. Mm-hmm. Which is about Sam curing Demon Dean with a mm. um sex magic ritual sex magic okay. and that was fucking amazing okay and it was so good i'm like i'm looking down the rest of their fix now and i'm like oh fuck i'm gonna read all of them <laughs> you know because um i just they just have such an amazing way with words yeah i you think know? that's what i it's, it's like to me this is a perfect example of the kind of fic that uses canon so beautifully to just embellish it even more and bring out things that are just right there if you choose to look at it you know and I think that's where I think sometimes people have to get up give up the hang up of um Wincest in the overall context of things you know it's like this is a story about two extraordinary brothers who are having to deal with life and death and to the world stuff and have the weight of the world on their shoulders. And it, it gets very almost um, myth, you know, myth-like in, in some, mm. in some respects. And I think that's, that's where you have to understand them to get that. Yeah. I, I really, I enjoyed it a lot. I enjoyed it. Like, thank you dreamer for giving me another person to <laughs> consider on the very like echelon of like great, Great Wincest, great Wincest yes. authors. So it is, it is. And I mean, we've summarized a lot of the plot here, but if you didn't heed the warning at the beginning, now you've heard us talk about it, you have to go and read it. There is so much. We did, we did no justice to it at all. Like, again, no. there's, there's so much to it that we couldn't even and get I think, into any of it. And the way that the author expresses things is just magical. So, yeah. I'm, I'm curious though if this, if this came to you after you'd read it, everything, and you don't realize it until the end, until the scene, the smut scene at the end of the last chapter. Mm-hmm. Did you get the feeling that when you compared the two, everything that had happened in the forest was kind of hazy? Like it had that kind of that heat haze mm-hmm. about it mm-hmm. and what happened. Well, yeah, that's why I was saying like the the temperature is very, like the the cold, I think just, because I think I'd made mention of it because one of my notes was talking about, it kind of felt like Dante's Inferno, like, you know, like going through the levels of hell and stuff like that to like reach, reach the end. And something that I had read about, I've never read Dante's Inferno, even though I've heard it's, it's great. I just, I I don't, I don't know if I could, but that slog at the end, at the end, there's it's cold, I think. So I was like, you know, I, I found it interesting that then they got back into cold, cold temperature, even mm. if it wasn't cold on the mountain, it was cold. So cold, I, a cold is like a shock to your system, right? It wakes, it, it, it can wake you up. It, it kind of like brings all your senses kind of back where, yeah, hot heat, it kind of makes you very, they've had all these other things occur with them, but it keeps me like sluggish and kind of like, you don't really know kind of what's going on you you could you could um sleep sleep a day away you know like in in the heat if you're not careful kind of stuff and like that that's sort of like yeah the hay stuff was definitely I, I like that they contrasted it so much with the opposite 
temperature for them to be just, they were their own heat in that room. Like yeah. the fuel wasn't working. And so kind of everything was just brought to the surface in terms of feelings and senses. And I, I like that a lot. I also like there was a moment in the smut where I can't remember what was happening. Something smutty was happening. And Dean was like, well, you know that, you know, you know, those moments when you're with a chick and you know, yeah. you kind of got like you, you limp dick, got drunk, like dick. Drunk, drunk dick. And, you know, you kind of have to get yourself going again. And he's like, you know, I would think of you, you know, and he whispered it like he, he was like the way it was like whispered quick, but like, I would think of you like, you know, and that yeah. would get him going again. And it's like, Hmm. I liked to the thought that it wasn't a hard leap for Sam after knowing the information that he knew, you know, and he was like, it was kind of like, it was just, it was wiped away. Because I really do feel like in that small moment when Sammy knew whatever discussion they had, which you don't get to hear, mm. I don't think, I, I don't think, I don't think Sammy would have said to him, Dean, you know, I'll, I'll never stop loving you. Or like, you know, as whatever a 13 year old can say in that moment would have eased his brother's mind, even though they were going to lose that, you know, it's kind of like giving mm. him a little bit of hope that, because sometimes things stick you know, and little things yeah. might stick in the back of your head. And that, that little needling, like something's, something's a little off or I, why do I feel this way? So it, it's not a big, it's not a big stretch, you know, when Sam's back home, you know, to mm-hmm. embrace everything I think, that he learned there. I think Dean, Dean mentions it though. He's like, do you remember? Did you feel the same way? Mm-hmm. Do you remember? Mm-hmm. And Sam's like, I don't know. Yeah. I think I loved you as much as it is possible for a 13 year old to Mm -hmm. love somebody, but Mm -hmm. that aspect of it. Yeah. I don't know. I was 13. And I, I do like the fact that you, you know, like you say, what sticks, what doesn't stick, Mm -hmm. you know, because it's just like, ah, it's just, it's just another level of their relationship, you know, because he keeps saying things again, like it's Dean, it's Dean, you know, it's, it's always it's Dean, like, you know, it's just, it's him. And I think I might've, did I highlight something towards the end? Hold on. Sorry. I'm like, I love technology. I never, I never (laughs) get stuff right. There was space in him that would always be for Dean and vice versa, primordial blood. This wasn't so different. And then there was another one. Oh, when they're, um, like when they're at the end of their, their lovemaking, as I will call it, this got me crying. Um, oh, no. No. Ooh. Dean hooked an arm around Sam's neck and mumbled, there you go, pressing his mouth to Sam's wet hair. I got you. And I was just like, oh, <laughs> I just started crying. Oh. Because it's like, you know, th- no matter what their relationship is, this thing that you can't really explain. And it's just beautiful, you know, in so many ways. So, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when an author can get you to cry, Good fucking job. <laughs> yeah. Good job. Good job. Yeah. I have no more words. <laughs> I think we've been talking about this for an hour and a half or more. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good for us. That's pretty, pretty good. good so, us. I mean, obviously, we have sold you on Pine Sweat. Go read it. Tell us what you think, guys. Mm-hmm. Yes. Please, please let us know. Please let us know. Comments. We want, we definitely want comments about this one. Yes. So if you, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to try to wrap this up. If you want to reach out to us, um, you can email us at idling in the Impala at gmail.com or reach out to us on Twitter at idling in the letter D Impala. If you'd like to make your voice a mail, check the description for a link to send us a voice message. You can find links to our personal socials and our AO3 accounts in the description. And there's also a link to my author website and original fiction. Woo, author website. We also have our own website now. So go check out idlinginthimpala.com. That is where you will find all of our merch. And there's YouTube stuff, Spotify stuff, and some like behind the scenes info about me and Sandra, uh, videos that we can't publish to YouTube and Spotify, stuff like that. So go check it out. We would love to hear from you. Don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and leave us a comment if you want to, especially if you are listening or watching on YouTube. Uh, likes and comments really help us with the YouTube algorithm. All hail its benevolence. Also, because this came up 
um, recently, and I have only just thought about it. If you listen to us, um, you just listen to the audio wherever you might get your podcast from, and you want to leave a comment and you can't because that's not an option on Spotify, we do have a YouTube channel. You can just come and leave a comment on YouTube. If you don't want to do that, just send it to us on Twitter. You know, there are multiple ways to reach out to us. Don't feel like just because you're listening to an audio version of the podcast on Spotify that you can't reach out to us. Please do, please. Yeah, and We want you, to hear what you've got to say. Yeah, if you do listen to us on Spotify, there is usually a Q&A question that you could find at the bottom that says, you know, what did you think of this episode? So if you're on it there, um, I think with Spotify, you should be able to do that too. So you can always just, if it, there, there are many ways, so just, just, just check it out. But yeah, worst comes to worst, YouTube. But if you're on Spotify, there should be a QA. and um, I think it's attached to every episode. So just whatever comment you want to leave us, we will, we will catch it that way too. But yeah, voicemail, email, Twitter, YouTube, Spotify. We are very accessible people. We are trying. Very accessible. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're done leaving a like and a comment, and if you haven't subscribed already, why not subscribe or follow, depending where you access your podcasts. Check out the current causes that we are championing in the description as well. And with that, we will say thank you very much for joining us in the back seat, guys. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye bye.